Today was a big day for Patrick. He had just moved to a new school and he was quite nervous, to say the least. He knew making friends would be hard and he already had difficulty blending in with the kids at his old school. Patrick knew that things had to be different this time around. Patrick was quite reserved. He often kept himself and never really started a conversation with anyone around him. He often carried a book with him to avoid having to converse with anyone. And his teachers even noticed that he never made an effort to interact with the other students. His parents constantly bothered him about it. So Patrick decided that when he would move to his new school, he would change this. Patrick walked into the new school courtyard on his very first day, ready to be a different kid than who he was at his old school. He made an effort to put his book away in hopes of coming across as a more approachable student to his classmates. As he walked down the hallways, he noticed a group of boys talking about a video game that his older brother played. Patrick had no interest in these type of video games, but he thought that maybe if he joined in and talked about the game with them, it could maybe help them accept him as his friend. You guys play zombie warfare? I just got the highest score on that server last week, said Patrick. He immediately felt a giant lump in his stomach. How could he lie for something like that? It was in fact his older brother that got the high score, but Patrick felt awful for lying. But it's not like I'm hurting anyone by saying I got a high score, right? So it should be all right, Patrick thought to himself. The group of boys immediately turned in awe as they wanted to see who just said that they got the highest score. No way, that's insane, said Alex, one of the boys in the group. What's your name? said another. My name's Patrick. Today's kind of my first day here. Well, Patrick, there's a game day on Thursday after school where we'll all come and play. You should definitely join us, said Alex. Uh-oh, Patrick thought to himself. I have to make up another lie because I don't even know how to play this game. They'll definitely know I'm making things up. Oh, actually, um, my mom wants me home on Thursday. I have an appointment, said Patrick. He hoped no one would catch him for lying. Oh, that's all right, said Alex, but maybe you should come next week. Patrick noticed that those groups of boys were not in his class. This meant that he had to make some new friends. In class, they watched a movie and everyone was talking about how cool this one actor was. Yeah, I met him when I went on family vacation to Florida, Patrick blurted out. He started lying with ease because he surely did not meet any of these actors. Everyone was mesmerized and was asking Patrick so many questions about his experience that of course didn't happen. Of course, Patrick's response to every question was a complete and utter lie. However, Patrick was enjoying all this attention that he never got before. Besides, he wasn't hurting anyone, so it shouldn't be a problem. Or so he thought. Patrick's mom had known that Patrick tended to have trouble when it came to making friends in his old school. So when she saw him talking to some classmates after school, she was very relieved. Hey Patrick, how was your first day at school? Are these guys some of your new friends? Hey mom, uh yeah, this is Alex, Sandy, Noah, and Liam. Oh, well, it's wonderful to meet you guys. Hey, if you guys aren't busy, and if it's okay with your parents, how about you all come over on Thursday? You guys will have a great time. We got a whole selection of board games downstairs, and even a huge flat screen if you guys would play some video games. Oh, that sounds like it would be super fun, said Alex. But Patrick, um, didn't you say you had an appointment on Thursday? Maybe we can come over another day instead. Patrick started standing awkwardly. His mom was confused, but perhaps she had missed something, so she was going to talk to Patrick about it in the car. Well, guys, pick a day that works with all of you, and we would love to have you over. As they were driving home, Patrick's mom asked, What appointment do you have on Thursday, Patrick? Am I forgetting something? Patrick was embarrassed, but he knew he had to fess up. After he explained everything to his mom, his mom explained to him that the importance of being honest in everything, even the small things, so that we do not hurt or trick the people around us, even if it's just a white lie. The next day at school, Patrick met up with his friends and explained that his brother was the one with the high leaderboard score and not him. They all laughed, and Patrick remains being their friend while still being himself. 
So in this story, there are a few points to consider. So first, like Patrick, many of us choose to lie or alter the truth just because we know that it's the easier route to take. So for example, because Patrick wanted something specific, which is to make friends at his new school, he chose to lie about being a top player in a game and about meeting an actor because he knew that that would put more attention on him than trying to make small talk with his classmates, hence making the whole process a lot easier for him. He knew it wasn't right, but it was easier and it didn't hurt anyone, so why not? That's exactly often what we do. We get tempted to lie knowing that it's wrong, but make excuses for ourselves by saying that it causes no harm to others and it's just a white lie. There is no such thing as a white lie. All lies are lies, despite what we can convince ourselves with. Second is that the more you do a sin, the more you grow in that sin, and it actually becomes like second nature to you. So like Patrick, the first time he lied, he felt a giant lump in his stomach. But the more he did it, 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 it came with him with ease and it became like second nature. So that's often the case, not just with lying, but with sin in general. That is when we need to recognize what we are doing and shift our focus back to growing in the virtue of honesty. Not just with others, but with ourselves as well. Staying true and being honest is very important, not only when it comes to building relationships with others, but for self-growth and most importantly, with our relationship with God. And lastly, as Patrick's mom explains that it is important to stay honest in everything, even the smallest of things because you don't want to hurt or trick anyone around you. This is very important because God asks of us to be truthful and honest people and as individuals who are created like we are created in his image and we are individuals who reflect his glory. So as individuals who have these things and possess it, we are supposed to portray his image to those around us and through our actions as they can be impacted in a very meaningful way to others. So overall, being honest is so important and it is a crucial virtue to constantly work to grow in. By faith we see the hand of God In the light of creation's grand design In the lives of those who prove His faithfulness We walk by faith and walk by sight By faith our fathers born And I take the prophets out again When I long for Messiah would appear For the power to break the chains of sin and death And he rise triumphant from the grave And I take the churches out to go the spirit to the lost, the deliver captives and the priests in the in every corner of the earth. We will stand as children of the promise, we will fix our eyes on him our souls.
A quote from St. Evram the Syrian. Drive the ship of my life by your commandments and give me understanding to be able to trade the talents so long as there is time before I am asked. Come, show me the trade of your time. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you a ruler over many things. What a great, magnificent statement when it is said by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. When heavens are filled with the echoes of his voice and souls rejoice at hearing what they lived for, enter into the joy of your Lord. O soul, remember that you have been entrusted with a few. Little understanding, small heart, little effort. Just be faithful over these few and little things until your Lord makes you rule over many things. Live faithfully in your love to Him, faithful in His faith, faithful in your spiritual strive and repentance. Know that your Lord looks at your faithfulness, prepares you for the heavenly crown, and will make you happy by His words. Enter into the joy of your Lord.